from internal work, just in statics, we have three really crucial results for how we can draw shear force and bending moment diagrams for almost any structure that we're going to recap now before going into a very simple example of how we can apply qualitative analysis techniques to draw the bending moment diagram and deflected shape. We could also draw the shear force diagram, but we're only going to concern ourselves really with bending moments and deflected shapes. So let's recall those three simple results that we're going to use time and time again. So for simply supported beam subject to a point load, we know that our bending moment diagram was a linear function of the distance along the beam and we're going to take that idea now for a UDL along the beam so we'll draw our UDL Using the shortest no notation, we've got a UDL on the beam, supports at either end, rollers if you want to be strictly true for simply supported conditions. And we knew as a result of this loading that the bending moment diagram was then a quadratic function across the length of the beam. And then we have the loading case when we have a moment somewhere along the beam. Let's draw the beam. And again, simple supports. And a moment somewhere along the beam. And this gave us the bending moment diagram. Again, it was a linear function but because of the moment that's applied at the point we get a jump in the bending moment diagram and we're going to use these relationships over and over again in the qualitative analysis of beams and frames so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a simple example of a point load on a beam. So we have our beam. And we've got support conditions. We're just going to go simply supported. So we're dealing with a problem that we're very familiar with. Simply supported beam and a point load at any location along the beam let's call the left hand support a the right hand support b and the point of application of the load c and so without using any numbers now we're going to try and find out what the deflected shape looks like and what the bending moment diagram would be expected to look like so what we're going to introduce now is a concept called points of certainty So along our beam, what we're going to do is look what we know as engineers just on inspection of this beam. And what we know is that A, the beam cannot deflect vertically at point A. Likewise, point B, there will be no vertical deflection at point B. Finally, the other piece of information we know about this beam is if we apply a load downwards at point C, we can be pretty certain that our beam will also deflect downwards at point C. So we're going to use this information. We don't know anything about the rotations of the beam as such. 
but we know some information here just on inspection about what we'd expect the deflection of the beam don't know where the maximum deflection occurs for definite but that at least gets us a very good qualitative judgment of what we'd expect the deflected shape to look like okay so we're going to take that idea and now we're going to see how we can use qualitative analyses to at least find out the directions of our reaction force this is probably something you've got used to doing automatically for those of you who need a little bit more help with these things this is a tool that could be very handy to you so we're going to consider our beam and now simply the best way to determine which directions the reactions go is just remove one of the reactions so originally you have a reaction at the right hand side a re and a reaction at the left hand side what happens if we remove the reaction at the right hand side so let's remove that reaction at the right hand side we would immediately expect our beam to rotate in an anti-clockwise manner and the same idea if we were to remove the right hand reaction we would immediately expect our beam to rotate clockwise and the only way that we can stop this rotation from happening we know that it doesn't happen um, because we wouldn't be in equilibrium we know therefore that the load must point upwards here on the left hand side likewise on the right hand side to stop this deformation from happening but the right hand side reaction must also point upwards and from there we can finally we can finally sketch our free body diagram with full confidence that we know the directions of the reaction forces so that's finally our free body diagram and now wish what we wish to do is draw what the bending moment diagram for this body would look like and instead of writing our bending moment equations what we're simply going to do is we're going to steal or borrow the results that we already know from statics that we're going to have for a point load we're going to have this linear variation of the bending moment until we get to the point load and we're just going to use that result don't know the value of the bending moment here at the application of the point load but we do know that we're going to get tension on the bottom face of this beam and therefore this would be what our bending moment diagram needs to look like.